So, um, how are you getting on with the Alpine? Well, I love the fact that you said Alpine. Why? Well, That's because how it's because a lot of people say oh, Alpine. Oh, and uh, when I if, if this I'm is buying a nice little bit of road, look at this. Yeah, this is upper curvy. This is upper stock, upper Stondon. Do you know what? I, I, I haven't found a piece of road that even slightly challenges this car all weekend. Oh, but do you feel that though? Because do you not feel it sort of? It just moves a little bit. And I, I, it, do, it does move. So I have to tell you, it's, I've driven this car yeah. uh, a, a few weeks, months ago, uh, and I had booked it in, forgetting it was the same week I was having a vasectomy. Oh. And because of these uh, tight racing seats and the general sporty demeanour of the car, it's not kind to the tender clackers of a man who's just had his... <laughs> it's not a vasectomy car. ...balls rummaged with. No. So, I, although I really enjoyed it, uh, my enjoyment was compromised by a feeling of extreme tenderness and pain in uh, my knacker bag. Is that like Time, Love and Tenderness by Michael <laughs> Bolton? Yeah, that's what that <laughs> song's about. <laughs> Time, Love, Tenderness. The ride is delightful, not because it's soft, but because it just feels like it's sort of skipping, yeah, skimming. Um, while we're at this junction looking at... There's a water tower. Yeah, that, that'll be on. Tower. George Clark will turn that into some sort of sex palace or something. <laughs> <laughs> George Clark's dirty spaces. Um, yes, while we're stopped at this junction. While we're stopped at the junction, I'm checking my mirror so we're not... Oh, actually, someone needs coming. Uh, so you immediately feel how refreshingly light it is. Yeah. How refreshingly Spartan it is. And in that brilliant way that the French know how to do Spartan, because they uh, always have done. I, yeah, but you see, I don't think it is Spartan because what what have you not got in here that you want? What have you not got in here that you want? Well, a lot of people have moaned about lack of um, cup holders, which I think is such an American. It's I mean, I've not got cup holders cup per se. Holder. Just storage look, space is a little bit on the. This fits cubbies. Cubbies. We have a, a little tray down here which you can, yeah. I can't actually get my hand into very easily. And, and actually, it's also. That's one of those classic, where's my phone? Oh, I've left it in the car again. Oh, this thing. There's a lot of that going on. I but you like know, a prominent. You but you've got this here then, I see. I see this. Well, so I've this put is okay my phone that. in here, but I, you know the you know the little ignition key, which yes. I'll get out. It's CAC, isn't it? I'm it's just, it's an old Renault credit card. That's key. the thing. But have you noticed they've put it in this leather wallet? Soft leather wallet. And then printed the corresponding, if you put it in the right way around like this, then the buttons correspond to the things on the outside of the wallet. And what they're saying is, just push, if you need to, push the outside of the wallet and it will work. And you don't ever have to Get remove this out. and go, is oh, this from an old Laguna? From, is, that like, is that late 90s or early 2000s? Oh, early 2000s. Same with the audio, the auxiliary audio controls. Yeah, that is bad. I like to have a Renault 19. That, that feels awful. But what they've done, this sort of obsession with saving weight, there is no other way of doing the stereo volume because everyone knows that, that the mass of modern car, a lot of it comes from the stereo volume control. Oh, well, so they've well, deleted yeah. it. And I'm going to pop this in the little thing. Especially if phone. it's billet lead. <laughs> As they often are. As they always are in French cars. I mean, I remember for a while, um, I think it was Mercedes were making the volume controls on their stereos um, out of a collapsed sun. <laughs> and it actually has an incredible density. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, there's, that, but that kind of thinking where you go, I well, know it's only it's, it's almost symbolic, but well, I keep getting in the car and doing that for the volume control. Oh, on that's the, the cruise. Is but it? that's cruise. But I see. I think cruise is not as important as volume because uh, cruise is so. Yes, I mean, but at the same time, you. I like cruise control in the car now because average speed cameras, all that kind of thing. Yeah. And this goes back to what I'm saying. What is there in in here or not in here that you really need? It's got. It's got. Nav on a touch screen, hasn't it? And yeah, it's got uh, some toggles. Yeah. It's got some toggles. The toggles are nice, aren't they? Yeah, toggles good are nice. Toggle action. Um, although they're sort of yeah. there's a flimsiness. Yeah, that's the thing. You feel like if I don't know if Volkswagen had done this. Well, look. I'm sure the underlying quality of the mechanism is broadly the same. They probably both come from Bosch or somebody, but somehow Renault managed to make it feel flimsy, and Volkswagen yeah. makes some effort to make it feel sturdy. And it's just that perception of what it's like that makes yeah. you feel good about a car or think, oh dear. This car does make horns. me. I, I think. No, my, I love the way it's going over these bumps. Yeah. Just my skipping. My kind of ten mile initial appraisal of it was. I love the fact that I'm looking at a badge that I haven't seen for ages, and other people are double-taking and going, 
what is that thing? It's yeah. not too flash, but it's unusual, and it's clearly sporty because it's sitting on the floor. Yeah. And I love the fact that it is completely unashamedly celebratory of it's it's only four pistons. You know, you, we're in a mm. world now where the old Boxster that's not called Boxster anymore mm. um, is um, gets gets derided by people for having its sort of um, reduction of pistons. Yes. And saying it's not good enough anymore because it's a flat four, when actually everyone that's driven it knows it's really good. It's yeah, it just sounds a bit awkward. It's uh, yeah, and actually it's all right. Sometimes it sounds a bit like a compressor, not in a bad way. No, the reason I didn't way. enjoy that car as much as the old one is actually nothing really to do with four versus six cylinders. It's the turbo. It just makes gives it that very sort of flat, consistent delivery. Yeah, and the joy of the old one was yeah. ringing it out. Yeah, um, this is a bit more ringing out, isn't it? Even though it's got a turbo on it. Yeah. But it I don't feels know, like I don't sort of then you, you ring it and there's stuff still going on. It doesn't it doesn't well, give out on you too much. It's only memory. but it's only two hundred and fifty horse. Yeah, well, that's all you need. Though. I mean, I don't, no, I, I mean it's but it's eleven hundred kilos. Mm. Is it eleven hundred? It's eleven hundred and three. Okay. It should be cool. Oh, see, look, I mean that just picking up. But you know that's the other thing. It took me half an hour, maybe more, and I did have to go on the internet in the end to work out how to keep it in manual and stop it from knocking into automatic. Oh yeah, you, you hold that it's down, the double, you? It's the double yeah. tap, I think. And then it makes it go M there. Yeah. Because I kept, it kept snicking back into auto and I'm like, I don't want it to be auto. Should I go that way? Uh, Which way yeah. should we go? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know, I don't know. Not that way, because we just come from Yeah, that we're going to go that way. Um, and Although the gearbox is a wet clutch, seven speed paddle shizzle, yeah. it's quick it's, and it is rewarding. The rest of the, the way this car is built, the whole, the whole project of this car, I would have loved to have felt what it was like to drive as a manual. I, I really would. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not one of these people that just says manuals are always better. They're not yeah. always better. It depends on the car, it depends on the the, the, the the purpose, but I have to say this car as a manual I think would be amazing. It would be nice to know, wouldn't it? It would be nice to know. Nice you know, you, know you can it's... still buy your Caymans and your Boxsters as a as a three pedal or a two pedal. Yeah. And, and I, I, this car should have been available as a manual. It's such a, it's such a really nice, eager car. I guess they probably looked at it though. And they said, right, we, I mean, it's already quite expensive, isn't it? Because this is a bespoke thing. It is. Bespoke aluminium shell. It's not, I mean, I know there's bits of guns of GTV6, look at that. Massive amount of camber on the front of those. It's always, they uh, always look a bit like the, <laughs> bit quite like, mean, They're but, set up for sort of um, amateur touring car. Yeah. <laughs> when you buy them. Uh, yeah, I, I think they've put so much, they, Obviously, the budget couldn't be up for it because even though it is quite expensive, well, this one, this, this is the launch edition, isn't it? It's 50 grand. The premiere edition. There's yeah. now an entry level one for sort of 45. Yeah. But it's still yeah, quite it's... a lot, although, I mean, for a bespoke mid engine sports car that's all aluminium, yeah. it goes. 96% aluminium. Is it? Yeah. That's you a lot. Know, the other bits are, I don't know what. Is it? Is it, <laughs> well, is it well, I mean, there's some leather in here for is a start. Is it cardboard? No <laughs> carbon know. here. Is it foam or is it real? I don't know, either way, I don't like that. There's just, a bit of wave carbon on there. No, no need. No need. It's just it's not an attractive finish, I think. It's, it's just it's like yeah, it's a very functional material. It looks great that. when you see bits of racing car or you open the doors on a an I3 or something. Got the door it. shuts, yeah. That's good because you're going, we've used this here for legitimate reasons, but yeah. this the bezel on an interior air vent does not need to be rigorously lightweighted for performance reasons. That's just to finish to make it look Actually, sporty. you know, that is a really, that's a really good point. Because this car's so light, and it feels light, and it feels eager, and it's lovely, it's really, really chuckable and threadable, mm. which mm. is not a term I use very often, but it feels genuinely threadable. It's the size though, isn't it? Yeah. It's the narrowness, because when it's, I first saw it in real life, I went, oh. It's narrow. It's one of those cars where you go, yeah. Well, this is much smaller than I expected. Yeah. Genuinely, it's like it looks like a sort of. The Veyron was the same for me. The Veyron yes, is, they're is a very small, small car, aren't they? very for, and supercars are normally massive.
this is the car of choice for shaggy haired men with um, bad shirts because uh, James May's bought one. Yeah. Has Eddie Jordan got one? Uh, well, no. He hasn't got shaggy hair. No. He's got no, bad shirts. He's got, he's got stormwater hair. Yeah. Uh, so James May's got one. Gordon Murray's got one. Yeah. I think Nick Mason's got one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Men of a certain age who appreciate intelligent yeah. engineering yes. are all over this car. Well, it takes a it takes a bold sort to say I'm not going to spend this kind of money on a Porsche. I'm not going to spend this kind of money yes. on a Porsche, and I'm not going to buy a second. I'm not going to buy a, you know an M an M car, or I'm not going to buy a second an AMG. Do you know who else is born as well? Not a famous person, a guy. Uh, I want I've... you to tell me that someone like David Bellamy's born. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if David Bellamy's still no. alive. Uh, Morris Stewart. <laughs> because uh, she's been on a quest for a long time now. She's close to. Uh, she just, she's, 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 yeah, she's just. She hates uh, excess and a needless mass. Yes. Needless mass. You know. For a long time, she might, the slogan of the six o'clock news to be simplicate and add lightness. And they went, that makes no sense in this context. Went, but it's a slogan to live by. <laughs> it's um, a good mantra. None of this is true. However, uh, also bought one of these, uh, a chap called uh, David Pook, who is uh, one of the engineers at SVO, Jaguar Land Rover Special Vehicles, yes. did the Project 8. Yep. And he is a vehicle dynamics expert when it came to splashing his own cash. He bought one of these. He's just bought one of these, I just saw it on Twitter. I don't think you'll see anyone in one of these and and think that they bought it accidentally. No. Because they went into the, the Renault showroom for a, for a Megan and came out accidentally with, a, with an Alpine. I went to buy a Capture. Yeah. And I just thought, do you know what? I can't be asked to buy a capture. They had, they had, they just, they had one of these in the showroom, and I just thought, I like blue. Um, yeah, it's a, it is. It's a very, it's a connoisseur's choice, definitely. It's a connoisseur's choice, and there's, there's lots of design features. I love the, I love the unashamed um, tricolor uh, flag emblems on the is side that, of the car. Is this just not? Is this on the launch edition only, or are they put that on all of them? I, don't I know. think that's launch edition. Um, I love that. I love the fact that there's visible body colour inside. Okay, but again, that, uh, do you know what? That is a bit faux because that's plastic, isn't it? So it's it, not it like is. it's actually part of the outside that's coming. No, it's cladding. It is cladding. But it's still a nice touch. It I is like a nice it. I like touch. The, uh, the quilting here because you know quilting could get a bit much after a while, but this is all right. It's a nice bit. Of quilting. It's a small it's, amount of quilting. It just looks like an elegant anorak. You've got your fixed. You've got your fixed paddles, which are metal. Do you, know, do you ever have a fear with fixed paddles? That you, as you as you're twirling the wheel, you're going to catch a finger and break it. Because <laughs> no. it haunts me that a little bit, even though in many ways fixed paddles make more sense. I don't, but what I do feel is this steering wheel to look at looks very ergonomic. Would you say you've got dimples, you've got you've got indentations here for thumbs. Yes. You've got lots of bits. I actually don't find it comfortable wherever I've tried holding it every way. Really? Still, still can't work out how huh. to do it. And so I, the steering wheel, and I wish it was all. Alcantara rather than being Yeah, it's weird fussy. to just put it up there where you don't really need it very yeah, much. Just, how often do you need yeah. the extra grip? There. This car could do with just that's, a, that's a circular wheel, a totally circular wheel, Alcantara and the same centre boss. Boom, you're done. Got a spoked button here. Spoked? Spoked button. And if you put spoked on, as you know, you press it once and you're in spoked and you get cackle on the downshift. Eng there. Engineering cackle. Or is that a crackle? Crackle or cackle? Crackle. Crackle? Crackle okay. pop. Oh, oh, that's amazing. Hello. That's amazing. <laughs> and then you had to break driving where there's no road. Like a bit of an anus. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you, I only realise this, if you hold your finger down on it, is it, is it if you hold your finger on it? Yeah, you get track, oh, yeah. track mode. And that's, so that's you, taken off the traction control stability but control. But you put it on track It's giving you level. a digital readout for revs, which no human brain can process. No human brain. And also, how much horsepower you're using and how many newton okay. meters. Yeah. So Usually. right now we're using but less than five horsepower. Uh. It's a deceivingly fast car too. Yes. Because it's, cause although it's four and a half, is it four and a half to 62? I think it's four and a half seconds to 62, which is quick. Yep. Yes. That, that, I would say yeah, generally. I mean that, that. You look at a Golf R though. Like this, this morning, driving to you in the traffic, and there was a Golf R that was a similar colour actually. And I thought, 
car has got more firepower, yeah. that's probably on most days quicker to 62 than this. But is it quicker and also probably quicker over a challenging road? Yeah, I would say there's yeah. one thing and about cheaper. this <laughs> and cheaper. Yes, and so you kind of go, you kind of go, Ooh. Uh, yeah. But this is more, and I hate using the word because I think it always sounds weird and slightly patronising. But I suppose this is more special because it's a sports car. It is more sense of occasion. Yeah, because almost because it's a less technically accomplished car. In a way, it's. Do you know what? I feel like. This, and it's again part of the, the lightness thing. It can get a bit skippity hoppity yes. sometimes, and you feel like it if you particularly turn the stability control off and you were really hammering it. I think it would probably suddenly start facing the wrong way before you knew it because yes. it's mid engine, small, yep. shortish wheelbase, yep. light, yep. just an unfortunate crest or, or a mid corner bump that's where you notice it it gets thrown off course not really badly yeah. you sort of go but because it's light yeah there's yeah. not enough mower there's not it's, there's not the same amount of mass we might be used to in there the is some cars. skitter pushing it down skitter skitter and I, I where I live there's loads of strange campers and there's also two humpback bridges and I, and I did I went over humpback bridge fairly hard and it took off in a very unusual way and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't going, I wasn't going, I wasn't breaking the speed limit, I'll make that clear, but it did feel like, oh, yeah. I think it's a car that you, it would take a long time to learn. To yeah. Get most, you can accelerate it and use all of its power frequently, but when it comes to tight corners, and if, and I'd love to take this on a track, I'd never take it on a track, you feel like you'd have to really learn it on a track. Uh, but once you did, it would be that car that you drive, you use all 248 horsepower all the time. Because the chassis yes. can totally take it. But, uh, but I, I, I think, this is what I was going to say about the skitter. The, the skitter, skitter is something where you go, now I know about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for it to happen, hopefully. And I'm aware that this is a, a, a characteristic of the car. Yeah. And it's a way in which it's not absolutely perfect and indomitable in the yeah. way that you know a golf R would be yes. on the same road. But it sort of adds to the personality and the character of the car and the stuff that you learn about it. There we go. Honk! Honk! Are you in Spalt now? You are, you? I'm in Spalt, which is why I'm getting crackle, cackle. Honk. Yeah, it's not super, I mean it does go honk, and, but it's not sort of super silly AMG honk. spec. I guess there's only so much you could really do with it. Also, a with a turbo on as well, because the turbo is going to dampen it a bit, isn't it? But they've, they've, they've yeah. done a little bit. I don't really mind that. It's not silly. I love the fact that it is. Pop it up, pop it up, pop it up, I love it up, the fact it that it is absolutely, resolutely confident of its four cylinderness. It's not trying to sound anything else. There's no. I don't think there's any sound synthesis. Uh, I you've don't know actually. You, you've got is there or is there not? That's I a good question. I don't think there is any photosynthesis of the engine. I mean, I think. You probably could fit a V6 in here, could you? I wonder. Well, because, yeah, because, like, depending on your generation, you might think of an Alpine as a V6, you know, the 80s one. What was that called? Uh, well, it was called not the Alpine in this country because at that point Chrysler slash Peugeot owned the rights to the Alpine name. That's right. So, so it's called the A610. The Talbot Alpine yeah. was, was owned by Chrysler. Um, and then the GTA after that, the but GTA. it was just sold as a Renault here. Oh, right, the GTA. number of people who remember that, it's basically you and me and about seven others, isn't it? It's a, such a super obscure car. It was, well, it's seldom seen. A so, few people might remember the later one because it was infamously driven by the character Marcus in the ill fated sitcom. Um, what was oh, that one set in Spain? Yes. El Dorado. El Dorado. Was Marcus! That is that what he Marcus, drove? Marcus, yeah, in the last episode uh, when it blew up. And, uh, and they did a little switcheroo for a crudely modified TR7. TR7. Bloody minute. hell. You, that, there is only three people in the world that know that. Yeah, okay, okay. and two of them are in this car. Yeah, so, sadly. Um, I do remember that. Marcus. That was a V6, wasn't it? Marcus, yes. That so, was a V6. So that, so that was Badger's Renault GTA, or an Alpine outside of the UK. Yeah. The Gordini Renault 5 that my mate Ed bought, the absolute rotten one on the day I got this, he said it also comes with the guy who put um, all the Alpine badges on it. Oh, right, okay. So we'd obviously bought Alpine badges. Mm. Um, 
I said, oh, uh, are you gonna, it's worth it for the engine and gearbox. He said, yeah, Johnny. He said, I didn't even have to unbolt the engine. I just pulled it. He said, the whole front just came off the car. <laughs> and I just sort of, just, I just dragged it out of the, out of the orchard. It's so it's wrong. It's, it's so wrong. See, no such worries here, because it's aluminum, so it'll never rot. Well, yeah. I mean, it might be yeah. a funny corrosion thing, but it won't. Oh, it won't while we're in through. the traffic, open your door and look at the threshold plate. Oh, it's coming off, isn't it? I yeah. saw that, yeah. yeah. And that is the only thing about this car. I love the fact that it embraces its sort of French flimsiness, and because it's so damn light. Yeah. But at the same time, in the back of your mind, like all Renault sport cars I've ever driven, you do scratch your chin and think, but in 60,000 miles? Yeah. Yeah, there's that, isn't there? There is, and I don't want to fulfil a cliche, and I, maybe the important parts of this car will be fine. That sill plate is lifting off a little bit. It's just, yeah, the maybe glue is the, just the not The glue's not quite. 3M enough. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you just look at it as, it's a classic French car trait, much displayed by the Peugeot 205, which is that the hull is strong. Yes. Everything else is flim flam. And if it yeah. comes off, well, you're just saving more weight. Throw it's it true, away. Isn't if it? it's not important, like a sill plate, that's not important. You don't need Throw it. Throw it away. Throw it away. You've saved a few grams. Yeah. If it is important, well, you'll just have to stick it back on again if it's like, I don't know, the steering wheel or something. But it's so it's true. Just, just don't, don't get hung up on it. The, the hull itself is, you go straight on here. Yeah. The hull itself is, um, is, is big. So you look at that. You hear that? Yeah, get that, get that. But it's also the way that, again, uh, because of the low weight, you just sort of, it gathers speed really oh, it, it's effortlessly brilliant. for a, you know, a car that's got a turbo and a... And it doesn't feel turbo y to me. No. It doesn't peak like a, you know, like a, the surge of a turbo of the boost. The surge of a turbo. It, yeah, it doesn't it's quite feel... quite a good name for an airport novel, that. The surge of the turbo. So down there, can you see it? It's so secluded. There's a build. No, there's a build plaque. There's a build plaque, and this is a pre-production car, isn't it? Because the plaque Cause number is zeroed out, xed it, out. Yeah, but what's amazing is nobody will ever see the build plaque because you can't see it. No, well you know it's there, don't you? Fabrique at the end. On any other car, it'd be there or there. J'habite à La Rochelle. So the, it boils back to the fact that this car that we're sitting in is 51 grand. Mm. And you can't buy one of these anymore because it's the launch edition. I think they've sold out now. Yeah. And it went on fire on Top Gear. Chris oh, Harris driving it. Yeah, I forgot about it that. It nearly burnt Eddie Jordan's toupee. <laughs> and, um, and, but he said it was amazing and he got back in it afterwards and said it's still amazing. And what? obviously. Monkey TV, Harris did. Yeah, and TV's James May loved it and he's yeah, bought one. Yeah, I liked it so much he bought it. And Gordon Murray with his cam tail hair and his, <laughs> his shirt. His high downforce hairstyle. He loves it and he's bought one. So. It gets under the skin of people that are in the know or appreciate engineering excellence. It's brilliant that the badge has come back. Have you seen the size of the badge on the fuel filler flap? It's a rather large, yes. Oh, it's a really, I mean, I bet that's the heaviest, I bet that's heavier than this door. Maybe the fuel filler was too light and they've had to weigh it down with a badge to stop it, I don't know, blowing open. And the suspension did sit like that when they put the fuel filler back and they've had to change it. Hey, now down. that's a good point though. It's like, you know, the Nissan GTR, they sort of fiddle with it every year in that kind of a slightly weirdly obsessive way they have. And at one point, I think they, they did sort of make some tweak, which was to account for the fact that, I guess they realise most owners have got no friends because they've got a GTR, <laughs> that it's going to be always driven one up. And the suspension slightly accounts for the weight in balance side to side but yeah. this being a fairly lightweight car yeah an average person sitting on that side is going to slightly throw the suspension out i've found what is you know it's 96 percent aluminium yes well i've found what what else it's made from it could be 30 of them that's just what i got the coffee in this morning because i had a and yogurt do you think there's more of these hidden around I, the they car could, they could be or did you think that was actually part of the car that come on what i what i do think is that this totally celebrates Frenchness. Yes. And and I, I like that I, about I know it. What you mean. And it and the DNA of Renault Sport is strong in because the judging of the damping, the steering feel. Yeah. It's so Renault Sport, and that's where Renault Sport are just mm. hard to beat. Actually, do you think? They do know what they're doing. They totally For know sure. what they're doing. For the gear, sure. the I would have liked a three-pedal manual one to try. I would love the option of one. But at the same time, the panels are blim blimming quick. 
Now, I'm not driving it hard because we're not in an environment where you can. Mm. But how damn comfortable is it? That's what I was just thinking. It's really comfortable. This is what I was just thinking. Yeah. But you could live with this car every day because it's not irritating yeah. and stiff and no. aggressive. Put it in normal mode and stop harping and popping if that's yeah. slightly embarrassing you in an urban area. Yeah. It is quite sort of usable, except uh, the boot's not massive, but I mean... That one's 96, that one's 100 litres. It's a, a sort but that of one's shaped in a way that you could fit a normal shallow, thing in. isn't it? Yeah, that one it's... is shaped like an ornamental pond, where it goes isn't in it? tight yeah, and yeah. it goes, you know, what's that flask, scientific flask a shape? A bell jar. It's like a bell, it's a bell jar, jar boot. <laughs> it is. Okay. It is like a bell jar so boot. So you put all your stuff in and then stir it a little bit. Yeah, if sure you were it's... buying a bag of wine, a loose I, I, bag, I, I, a sealed I, I loose bag. I actually often do buy wine by the bag. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it itself feels quite French, so yeah, it is good. So um, there you go, many bags of wine, like um, like a bladder fuel tank in a race car. Yeah, still very loose and just yeah. So really, to sum up, I think I I like this car. You like this car. I think to sum up, um, and I like the people who've got this car. Yeah, I like James May. I like Gordon Murray. I like Nick Mason. But I've met all three of those people, and they're all quite nice blokes. They're very nice blokes, in fact. Yeah. Affable men. Yeah. Uh, and I've met uh, David Pook from Jaguar Land Rover, and he is also an affable man. There you go. So not only is this a nice car and an intelligent car, but it also attracts nice, intelligent owners. Because if you see someone in one of these, I'm pretty certain they will not be a prick. And yeah. you can't guarantee that about a lot of other cars. <laughs>